Paula and Skylar and Jonathan. Steve says he sings in Hebrew, though, so he'll need an interpreter. Uh, what? That's a tongue. Hebrew is a tongue. <laughs> oh, we have been talking about Christmas being for real people um, the last several weeks. We talked about real people who had their thoughts and dreams and hopes of their children being changed. And we talked about people whose uh, thoughts and hopes and dreams about their marriages uh, were changed uh, when the Lord entered into their lives. And we talked about, uh, last week we talked about our, our graying saints who uh, are coming into the prime of their life in the eyes of the Lord as far as godliness, as far as faithfulness and perseverance. The Christmas story is filled with real people. But oftentimes we focus on, on the, what would I call it, the, the, the wonderful aspects of it, the supernatural aspects of it. The, the, and we get the idea that these folks that participated in the Christmas story were not real. And if they're not real, how do we participate in the Christmas story? We have to become part of this. Christmas is for real folks. Um, it's kind of a str It didn't move. Uh-oh. Really? Really? There we go. I like that picture of Charlie Brown. Uh, I don't know what they did to it. I think they made him into 3D character. He's also in your bulletin. Um, but he looks real in this photo <laughs> or whatever. Or he looks stranger than normal, maybe. Um, they made him into a 3D character, and uh, I like the fact that it, it looks a little bit more real than, uh, than he does in the cartoons and in the, in the comic strips. But if Christmas isn't for real people, how do we fit into it? But I believe that Christmas is for real people. Really, I do. It is for you and I. It's for all of us to participate in, to become part of this story, to make it our own, to realize that these people worship the Lord and we're the same kind of people that we are. We start the Christmas story in Matthew with a very long list of names. Um, and we look at them and go, these guys actually exist. And this list starts with Abraham. And I went for the most real people I could find uh, as far as pictures go. Uh, this guy doesn't look pious or holy. He looks like he's in a lot of trouble. He looks like he's seen a lot of grief over the years. He looks wrinkled. He looks... Uh, worried, and frankly, that's who Abraham was, because Abraham doubted God a lot of times. But then he would move to belief, and, but then he would move back to doubt, and then he would move back to belief, and he vacillated between these two poles. And we do this as well. And we need to understand that, that Christmas, uh, that the Lord that we worship can be doubted. He's always going to come through. But we're always going to have doubts. And you may have doubts in your life about the Christmas story. You may have doubts in your life about whether God wants to heal you or whether he has the power to heal you, whether God doesn't care or whether God is, is, doesn't have the, the power to help you. We have to understand that Christ accepts us where we are. He came into this world not as a perfect world, but he came into this world as a very imperfect place, a very real place, and he accepts us the way that we are. And then he asks us to move on to belief. We read about Zechariah, and we talked a little bit about uh, he and Elizabeth earlier in this series. Zechariah, again, is a very real person. You know, he wasn't that, that amazingly powerful, believing pastor that we would have expected him to be. He, when he was first told that he was going to be part of the Christmas story, he doubted. And then he was told to shut up for nine months while his, while his uh, wife prepared for the delivery of John the Baptist. Because he did doubt. He started with the same, uh, from the same position that Abraham did, with this doubt in his heart. Elizabeth, I think she actually had a little bit more faith. But even she, while she believed, she hid her pregnancy from the rest of the world. 
And I don't know that she was, if she was embarrassed by this, you know, being an elderly woman, uh, and now all of a sudden she was having a child, or whether she didn't expect God to pull this off, or whether or not she did, you know, I don't know what her problem was. I don't know why she hid it. But it says that she hid it from, from the view of the community until her time for delivery was there. She had doubts, but she also believed. She had fears, but she also had courage. A very real person. I tried to find a picture of Mary without her being dressed in blue. They always dress her in blue because she's the queen of heaven, or so tradition says, and they always dress her in blue. And if you try to find a picture of Mary that's not dressed in blue, it's hard to do. Even, even our little manger scene here, she has blue on. You know, everywhere it's blue. So I went and found, tried to find the most really Jewish-looking young woman I could find. I, I don't know who this woman is. <laughs> I like her. Um, she's not terribly pretty. She's not terribly ugly. She's not, uh, doesn't look like many of us. I think, she, you know, I typed into Google, young woman, young Jewish woman with a veil, and I got that. Because every time I type Mary in, it didn't look real. But Mary was a real young woman with a very important part in history. The first thing that we read about Mary was that she was terrified. The angel shows up and she was sore afraid. She was engulfed by this thing and didn't know what to think about this thing. The next thing we read about was that she questioned. She says, how can this possibly be? She doubted God's power in this whole situation. She was a very real person. And there are times in this next year, and there have been times in your life, when God has asked you to do something, and the first thing your reaction is, is, oh no. And the second reaction is, is how can I possibly do this? She's a very real young lady, but then she obeyed. And that is what God is asking us to do. Not as super saints, not as super Christians, but as real people with fears and aspirations. He is asking us to obey what he has given, brought into our life. Her husband Joseph starts off being angry in the, Christ, in the Christmas story. And he thinks he has a right to be angry. And I don't think he was just angry at Mary. I think he was angry at himself as well. Because I think he was angry at the fact that he had, had not seen it coming. You know, most of us, when our relationships start to, to deteriorate, we at least see it coming. But he's going, how could I have been so stupid not to have seen any of the signs? There weren't any signs. That's why he didn't see it coming. But he had to be angry even at himself. He's angry at himself for not realizing that, that Mary didn't love him. At least he, so he thought. But then he moves on, because he is a righteous man, and we are good people. We're not as good as we could be. We no, don't know exactly what God asks of us at all times, and Joseph didn't either. He thought he was going to do the right thing, and he did do the right thing as far as he knew. But it was the wrong thing in God's plan. And so we can be mistaken. Here Joseph is angry, he's mistaken in what he wants to do, but then he obeys. He obeys when God reveals to him. And real people can do what God asks of them in this world. And he asks us to do difficult things. And we all know that Joseph was asked to do a very difficult thing, to put up with the ridicule of his neighbors, saying, what did you do? You know, why can't you just admit what happened? And he's going, I'm a righteous man. I have done nothing wrong, and Mary has done nothing wrong. And they're all going, yeah, right. Then it says one other thing. It, say, it says that he restrained from being intimate with Mary. I think this goes back to the story of Abraham and Isaac. Because God had been planning to bring the Messiah into the world, and he starts with Abraham, and he works through Isaac, and he works down through David and all the way down through the years. But I think this ties Jesus and Joseph back to Abraham. Abraham had a problem. He was a very real person. He had a gorgeous wife. But he lived in a dangerous world where dangerous people did what they wanted to do. And so the, Abraham was afraid of these people. And so every time he got into a bit of a jam, every time he ran into a, a king that had more power than he did, he lied about that 
the fact that Sarah was his wife and instead emphasized the fact that Sarah was his sister. 